is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from so many of you about different topics to cover on the show. Uh, today, we're going to cover the topic that I probably got the most comments about and the most requests to do. So, what I'm going to do, as always, I want to start out saying hello to everyone checking in and I want to have everyone let me know where you're tuning in from, city, state, and if you're tuning in from outside of this great nation, let me know, country, region, province, whatever it may be. So give yourself a shout out. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We love seeing all the people from across the country and around the world tuning in. So uh, shout yourself out. Do it now. And let's go. So, we're going to start out with Let's Go Brandon. Now, by me saying Let's Go Brandon, you know Facebook is going to immediately throttle this video down. But a lot of people have been asking about where did that come from? A lot of people have been hearing the chant. People are holding signs in uh, stadiums now and chanting this. Um, it originated after uh, a NASCAR race where the pit reporter was uh, interviewing the driver who won. His name was Brandon. And it was not in the, the Cup Series. It was in the lower level series. So you may not have seen it because that's not, you know, it's kind of like for those of you who are not NASCAR fans, there's like a lower level uh, and then there's a higher level, which is, you know, the, uh, the main Cup Series. So. He he won the lower level race, and um, while the reporter was interviewing him, the crowd at the NASCAR. And if you guys have ever been to a NASCAR race, there's a lot of people there. It is, obviously you have a mile to pack people in, so uh, it is a quite uh, the sight to see going to a NASCAR race. I'm a NASCAR fan. I've been to numerous races. So the crowd is chanting, let's go, Brandon. And uh, or, or, <laughs> the crowd is chanting, not let's go, Brandon. The crowd is chanting uh, F, the president's first name and last name. And I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying that's what they were chanting. Okay, I know Facebook is already going to kill this video. But uh, you guys will... Head over to the YouTube channel and you'll see like the full edited post-production version of this video. So please do that. Um, these videos are actually going to be stopping here on Facebook for obvious reasons. So um, they're chanting that statement about the president. And the reporter, her name is Kelly Stavast. And Kelly Stavast clearly hears what the crowd is chanting. And during the, at the beginning of the interview... Says, uh, and you could hear the crowd behind you chanting, let's go, Brandon. And his name was Brandon, the guy who won the race. And it was clear as day. I mean, you could be like deaf and you would have heard what they were actually saying. Um, so the question people had is, why did Kelly Stavast, a reporter for the race and a professional, why did she say, oh, we could hear the crowd chanting, let's Go, Brandon. Now, she did not, she could have done one thing. A lot of people say, oh, what could she have done? Well, she could have done uh, one of many things. She could have ignored what the crowd was saying. They were using a derogatory term about the president of the United States. So they, she could have just ignored it and just continued the conversation with Brandon, who won the race. She didn't even need to uh, address the situation with what was going on in the crowd. And now you have tens of thousands of people um, chanting this. So uh, she could have just left it alone. She could have, because she was doing a live interview, she could have apologized to the audience. You know, sometimes you see a reporter and some they're doing the report and some crazy person comes up behind them and yells something and does something live on camera, maybe does something uh, inappropriate or says something profane, and they run away. And what you see is the reporter saying, for those of you viewing at home, our apologies. Okay? Um, and that, that's it. She could have said that, and that would have been it. 
Or, look, it said she could have said nothing at all. Or the producers could have just cut the feed and gone to something else. There are many things that could have happened during this situation. What she chose to do was what everyone is calling lie to the viewers, where we're all hearing what's being said, and what she chose to do was literally try to pull the wool over everyone's eyes, right, and say, oh, that's not what you're hearing. They're chanting, let's go Brandon. And not only does she do it from the standpoint of clearly, you can, but she actually says it to the driver. She said, ah, and you can hear the crowd cheering, let's go Brandon. And even the look on the driver's face was like, he even knew they weren't, they were not chanting, let's go Brandon. He knew that. So he looks at her, who says, oh, they're chanting, let's go Brent. And he's like, wait a second. Wait a second. Like, hold on. So this poor woman is getting absolutely destroyed on social media. Now, she hasn't made a post in like two months. However, on her posts, people are just going and commenting and tearing her apart. Now, should... Is that right? No, that's not right. I mean, you're, you're, people are harassing this woman, okay? She, what I feel is, not made a mistake because I think it was done, in, that's my opinion. We, we, we don't really do opinions here, right? But, <laughs> there's a lot of people, and I think I might pick this up, one of the viewers, one of you, so thank you, one of you gave what the name of the show is going to be from this point on. I'm going to let you know what that name is in about 30 seconds, because it was great. And we are going to name the show after what one of you, I think I think you're on here right now watching, and I'm gonna give the credit where credit's due. Okay, so what she chose to do was lie and fabricate something on live television that everyone watching knew, even the person she was speaking to knew just wasn't true. And that was intentional. Now. What were her intentions? Were her intentions to pull the wool over our eyes and tell us that they were saying something that, or was her intention to kind of downplay what they were chanting because it was something inappropriate and derogatory and try to kind of downplay it and say, oh, it sounds like they're saying, let's go Brandon. Um, maybe she was doing that and maybe that was her intention because clearly she didn't want to make a spectacle of what the crowd was saying. I don't know. But all we do know is she made a poor decision in that moment. And it has now gone viral. And this poor woman, she's going to go down in history and it's going to be infamous. And she could, I don't know, she could win a Pulitzer Prize and no one's going to know anything about her except Kelly Stavon. People don't even know her name. People didn't even know her name. I'm giving you her name. Some of you, if you, if you knew her name, just comment, I knew it. If you didn't, well, then you didn't. But if you actually knew her name, comment, I did. Or if you didn't know her name, just comment, I, I had no idea. Clues, put a question mark. Um, so, uh, Kelly Stavast is the reporter who said it. A lot of people were asking who said it. And that's the story of how it happened. Um, so, poor choice, bad move. We're not done. We're not done. So, the name of the show that was derived from a lot of what I talk about because I've said it during the show is let me get this straight. And I say that a lot because there are so many things that are coming out that are so unbelievable that you I sit back sometimes when I read them and I say, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me get this straight. They are saying this and they expect us to believe this based on this which makes no sense at all. Is that right? Let me get this straight. So going forward, and it's going to be on, you know, primarily on the YouTube, uh, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight with Suresh. Let me get this straight. Because there are so many things that are so unbelievable going on that um, we have to now address them. And we're going to come at you, as you know, 
we're coming straight down the pipe, which was another name that we were working because, you know, we're not here on the left. We're not here on the right. We're, we're coming to you straight down the middle, right? We're trying to remove opinion and emotion and everything from this. And we're trying to come down straight from the middle from a common sense point of view. Okay. We're not going to say, put anyone on a pedestal. We're not going to put anyone down. We're going to come at it from common sense. So, and if you have common sense and you watch the show and listen to the show, you're going to relate and it's going to resonate with you. Now, if you don't have common sense and you are an emotional person that is basing your opinion solely based on emotion and uh, some high concept stuff that isn't even real and your hatred for someone, well, then this isn't going to be the show for you. We're coming down the street. Let me get this straight. Southwest Airlines. Let me know here in the comments with the airplane emoji if you've ever had a flight canceled on you. If you've ever been traveling, air travel, and you've had a flight canceled on you, let me know. Let me know. Put the little airplane emoji, okay? So I'm just trying I'm trying to get I'm trying to get intel from my secret source. Um, okay, so just throw, throw the plane emoji. Okay, so, or throw the hand that you've been, you, you, you've, had, you've had a flight and it's been canceled on you. It sucks. There's no other way to say it. It just sucks. It's, it's completely inconvenient. You know, your plans are now bumped. You might miss a connecting flight. It's terrible, right? But you don't like it. So this past weekend, Southwest Airlines canceled 1,800, 1,800 flights. Thousands and thousands of people, of course, were completely inconvenienced. People missed funerals. People missed weddings. Uh, people missed the birth of their children. You name it, it happened. Okay? People miss the, the passing of a family member that they're trying to get home to see. The stories are endless. And the initial report that the media gave us was South, and I'm going to post the, uh, the, or you the article, the link, I'll, put, I'll post it down below in the comments. Southwest Airlines cancels over a thousand flights, it was nearly 2,000, due to weather. Due to weather, they canceled 1,800 flights. And that's what they said. So people looked at the weather radar and they said, wait a second, it's really only raining in Florida right now, and it's not even that bad. There were some storms in central Florida, not a hurricane, nothing crazy. How did we cancel 1,800 flights because of some rain in South Florida, not even where Southwest is based? So a lot of people were confused. A lot of people were angry. They were sitting somewhere and it was perfectly sunny. And it just didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. The flight that they were, the, the, the plane that was coming to them was coming to them from somewhere sunny. And where they were was bright and sunny, right? So that was the first thing. The second thing was no other airline carriers canceled their flights. So that's the other thing that people were scratching their head. I talked to many people who were in the airport. They had their flights canceled and they were looking around and, um, you know, American Airlines, United Airlines, all the other airlines were just flying around, no problem. Those flights weren't even delayed. They had planes going in and out of Florida, no delays. So the people who were on Southwest were like, wait a second, what is going on here? And the report was weather-related delays. Well, now, now the truth comes out. So when I first heard this, I said, hold on, let me get this straight. You See what I did there? Let me get this straight. You canceled 1,800 flights and ruined God knows what across the country, and you're, they're, they pulled the Millie Vanilli. They blamed it on the rain, right? Blame it on the rain. The problem was, what they didn't take a second to think about was, nobody else was canceling their flights. They just, Millie Vanilli, blame it on the rain, and no one will say anything. No one will be the wiser. Did they really think that we were that dumb? to just not look at what was happening right in front of our eyes. 
Now, I know that's a novel concept. Don't believe what is being told to you. Look at what's happening right in front of your eyes. And what happened was people were at the airport. And they were in the middle of it. And they said, hold on a second. You're telling me that my flight is canceled due to weather. However, I'm with my own eyes looking at all these other flights taking off. No problems. Flights coming in, landing. Flights taking off. No problem. Only Southwest. Blame it on the rain. Like Millie Vanilli. Blame it on the rain. And they thought no one was going to say anything. Well, now it's come out. Now it's come out, 48 hours later, the truth. The pilots walked out in protest against the mandates. The mandates, you know, I can't say the word, but the, you know, yeah, two. No, now you got to get three. I heard number four is coming. So, the pilots walked out. There was a massive call out, which uh, left them in a quandary where they, they didn't have pilots, to, you know. And so now, now after all the information was leaked, the pilot union president came out and spoke out. Now they're saying, well, yeah, it, okay, all right. So we had some pilots call out, more than usual called out, and... Yes, that caused a disruption. However, 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 there was some rain in a couple of areas. What? They're still trying to milly vanilly this. They're still trying to blame it on the rain. Although, where they're saying the issues were, a dozen other airlines were taking off and landing planes there in those locations. No problem. So, I talked to two people who work for Southwest, and they said it was almost unbelievable for them to be on the inside seeing what the media was saying was happening when they knew that wasn't the truth. Because all the pilots and all the you know, flight attendants, they all knew what was going on. They had known that it was going to happen for weeks. For weeks, they knew it was going to happen. They knew the weekend it was going to happen. So was it premeditated? Yes. Is it the right thing to do? I'm not saying it is. However, it happened. It happened. A lot of people say it was a selfish thing to do. I'm not saying that's wrong because a lot of people who were just innocent, you know, I guess collateral damage got caught up in that, right? So I'm not saying what the pilots did was right or wrong. I'm just saying what they told us was the reason was not the reason. And now, once again, after the dust settles, the truth comes out, right? So I just don't understand why they didn't just come out from the get-go and say, right, the cover-up is always worse than the crime, right? We all know that to be true. The cover-up is always worse than the crime. So if they had just come out and said, listen, everyone, we apologize. We apologize to you. There's been a major call-out we believe it has something to do with the mandates for the and we are doing our best to resolve this and our apologies. You would have had probably half the people, 50% say, okay, I got you. I got, I, 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 I got it. Because they maybe are going through the same thing at their place of employment. And then you would have had 50% of the people say they're selfish, this is about you know the health of Everyone around, the, you know, mind you, they're, they're standing there at the airport, they're 300 pounds, they're eating their, you know, their donuts and their chili cheese fries, and they're saying this is about our health, and this is it's selfish, and this, and, you know, maybe they're not wrong. Maybe it was a selfish move. Who knows? I'm not, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to judge uh, about what the pilots chose to do, use their accrued sick time jointly to call out sick in a certain period of time that caused a major disruption. I'm not going to say that's right or wrong, because that would be my opinion. I'm going to hold it inside, right? I have my own feeling about that. What I will say is what was wrong was lying to the American people about the real reason of why it happened. 
That's wrong. Now, lastly, and this is the one that so many people, and this is the one that's going to completely get me kicked off Facebook. A report came out today that roughly 200, roughly 200 government employees over the past year and a half who had come down with um, whew, this is tough this, this is going to be unbelievable you guys are not even going to believe this roughly 200 members of Congress and their families and the report is out you can go see it for yourself don't take my word for it go see it for your, and I, I don't care who you voted for I don't care what side of the aisle political party gay, straight, black, or white, if you have a brain in between your ears and you have any sense at all, you somehow, at some point, knew this to be true. Now, I've seen it happen personally. I'm not going to name names, but I've now seen it at, personally, I've seen it at least five times, what I'm about to tell you happen. And I didn't say anything to these people because that's not my place to say, hey, whoa, I, I told you so. However, however, this is crazy. And when I heard it, and then I saw the report, and I saw the evidence, no one's making this up here. It's all now out there. It was released. We're getting whistleblowers, real and fake, every day. I said, hold on a second. Let me get this straight. 200 members of Congress, and I'm looking at the report right here. Roughly 200 members of Congress, their family members and or staffers, over the last year and a half, that had contracted, you know what, utilized and were successfully treated with the anti, well, I'm just not going to say, ivermectin, okay? The, the, the drug ivermectin. So, 200 family members, staffers, they did not report utilizing that drug to better themselves. They did not report it. It was now found out. What's more troubling is that these members of Congress, who you and I voted in, maybe you voted for one, I voted for one, who knows, but we as Americans voted in, and we as Americans paying tax, right? The biggest wealthy voter for all of us is paying tax, we pay their salaries. These people, while taking something themselves and giving it to their family members and their staffers who were sick, at the same time were voting to ban you from taking it and to ban and prevent you from giving it to your family members should they get sick. I said, hold on, let me get this straight. They were taking a drug to take care of themselves and their family members and their staffers while going into Congress and voting to suppress the distribution of that drug to you and I. I don't know how anyone, like I said, I don't care who you voted for. I don't care you hate the orange guy who's off playing golf somewhere right now, Mr. Reality TV star, or whether you hate the guy who's there right now because you think he's senile, or whether you love the guy who's playing golf right now and you want him back, or you love the guy who's in office right now 
because you think he's doing a good job, whatever. I don't care who you are. You have to be furious with the fact that these people were taking a drug to save themselves, their staffers, and their family members while voting and putting the stamp on bills and executive orders and actions saying, you can't get it. It's too dangerous. I don't care who you are. If that doesn't infuriate you, no matter who you voted for, if that doesn't infuriate you, you simply have lost touch with reality. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. Now, I will say that I know five people who were calling it a horse drug. Now, they're calling it a horse drug. Let me, let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. This is something that has been around since the 70s that has been called a, and I'm reading this directly, from a medical and biological website, a wonder drug on the same level as penicillin and aspirin that is help that is responsible for saving billions of lives around the world. Human lives, not horses. Human lives, right here. This is not some crazy right-wing website. This is the Japanese, the Japanese industry of biological science. I'll put the link. I'll put the link below. Wonder drug on par with penicillin and aspirin, responsible for saving billions of lives around the world. Roughly 200 politicians took this drug. And gave it to their family members and their staff members who got sick with the virus. And literally at the same time we're voting to keep it out of your hands. If you had a family member that passed away, that was really ill, didn't make it. That wasn't an alternative to them because it was banned or prohibited where you are in most of the country. I don't know how you feel right now. I don't know how I feel right now. And like I said, if hearing that doesn't infuriate you, then you just might not have a pulse. If hearing that, you still say, it's okay. It's okay. I'm okay with the fact that they, when they got sick, their family members got sick, their loved ones got sick, or the people that worked for them got sick, that they took or gave them a pill that helped to get them better. It says they got, they got, they got, they, everyone got better. It says right here, everyone got better. And they didn't report it. Not only did they not report it, they made sure you and your family couldn't get it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you think that's perfectly fine. Let me think if you think, you know, South Coast Airlines telling, you know, Milli Vanilli, blame it on the rain. It's okay. Let me know what you think. Let me think if you think that's totally fine or it's unacceptable. I'd love to know your feedback, you know. Reporters just fabricating things, telling you you're hearing things. 
live on air? Let us know. You'll see all this post-production on YouTube. We'll put links, we'll put video clips, all that stuff. So check out our YouTube channel. Because there's going to be additional content looped in here. Thank you for watching. Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Even though they're going to tell you you're hearing something else. Keep your eyes open because they're going to tell you you're seeing something else. And make educated decisions for yourself. Because individually, we're all smart. We all make good decisions. It's however, when we see other things, other people doing stuff around us, it's when we start making poor decisions and we stop using our common sense. Think about it. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, you know, basic things. Fire's going around. All right, thanks for watching, be safe. We'll see you next time.